Welcome to the Grant Writing Simplified Podcast. This is the place to learn how to make a big impact in your community through grant writing and nonprofit consulting. The world needs you to step forward as a grant writer and use your skills to lead with confidence. I'm Teresa Huff, former special ed teacher turned grant writer and nonprofit strategist. In my 20 years of freelancing, I've helped nonprofits triple their funding and exponentially increase their reach. Now I'm stepping up to mentor freelancers and nonprofit leaders like you who are ready to take your skills to the next level. It's time to get intentional about your vision so you can create lasting change in your community. Learn the skills and strategies you need to become the grant writer the world needs. Let's do this. Hey friends, welcome to episode 36 of Grant Writing Simplified. I'm your host, Teresa Huff, and this is part four in our nonprofit fundraising series. If you've missed the last three episodes in this series, make sure you go back and catch those later because there is a ton of great advice there and you'll be able to implement those tips right away. Now, a lot of people lately have been asking me about grants and especially for startup nonprofits or smaller nonprofits that are just struggling and not sure how to get their traction and get going. They can't quite get things off the ground the way they had envisioned. So that's why I wanted to go over this episode and give you some more specific steps to actually creating a nonprofit fundraising plan. A lot of newer nonprofits think they can just write some grants to get things started, but grants are only one small piece of your fundraising plan. And they come much later in the story than most people think. Grant funders don't want to be your first dollar or your only dollar. I explain this in more detail in episode six, where I talk about grant readiness and the things you need to do to set yourself up for success down the road with grants. Because if you start that too early, you can actually waste a lot of time and even damage your nonprofit's reputation. In this episode, though, I want to help you look at the bigger picture of your fuller nonprofit fundraising plan. And I'm talking to both nonprofits and grant writers here because nonprofits need to understand where you are in the process so that you can focus your efforts more effectively and set realistic goals. And for grant writers, chances are you're gonna need to advise clients or potential clients sooner or later so that you and they aren't chasing dollars. You don't want to get into that cycle And you want to make sure to recognize that if your clients are in that cycle. So the more you are aware and can advise on that, the better. If you are a grant writer, chances are you'll at least be on the fringes of your nonprofit's larger fundraising efforts sooner or later. And you may find a lot of overlap where you end up helping with more and more actual fundraising activities as well. Some are more of a broader development director where that is a part of their job description. Others are strictly grant writers, but yet it does have an effect on the things you're doing. And you should be at least planning and considering both aspects hand in hand of the grant writing and the fundraising piece. Now back in episode 34, I gave you over 60 fundraising ideas. It says 50, but by the time it was all said and done, it was over 60. (laughs) And I also gave you nine questions you should be asking before you start the fundraising. And those were some great ideas, and it will help you think through which ones are the best fit for you. But if that big long list left you scratching your head and wondering, okay, where do we even start? Then this list will help you take that a few steps further and get more clarity on where to start. You can't possibly do all the fundraisers at once, nor should you try. That's why it's so important to first look at this bigger picture and then you can determine how you should move forward. And this is not reliant on any one person. This should not be a sole person's decision. This should be a team decision with the board, the director, any fundraising key volunteers that are involved with this or a fundraising committee. Make sure that you're doing this together and working together because you're all gonna be involved in this. All right, here we go, number one you need to make sure you have your budget. This includes your past budget so that you know you're spending in the past and your projected budget of what do you want to spend and where do you want to be? What kind of income goals do you have for that? Number two, you need to really have a clear vision 
mission, and core values for your nonprofit. Now, if you don't have these, or if you just feel like they're a huge mouthful or they're really lame, then this is what I help nonprofits do. We work together to develop the strategy and really dig deeper to make sure we're putting together a powerful vision and mission that drives home what you do, who you do it for, and just really is a compelling statement about you in a nutshell. So if you are struggling with that piece, book a strategy call and let's get that settled. Number three, your goals. You need to set fundraising goals and make sure these are well-defined enough so that you'll know when you've reached them. Don't just say, we want to raise money to build a new building. Be a lot more specific than that. And if that is your goal, that's great, but maybe break it down into several smaller goals as well and several steps along the way, kind of have some landmarks. Number four, consider your community. Look at what events are coming up or maybe what events tend to be recurring each year or twice a year, each quarter, and look at trends, what's becoming more popular. Obviously right now, online events are more popular or turning to more of a hybrid model where it's online and in person and giving people that option. So consider what's going on. Consider the timeline. Is there usually a big Christmas event in your community? Then you probably need to back up and work backwards and start planning that several months ahead so that you can have things in place and not be scrambling in November of, oh, that's coming up. We should be a part of it. Oh yeah, good idea. Back up and think that through and plan ahead. Number five, evaluate your current funding base. Look at what funding sources do you have right now? How diverse is it? And what different sources? Is it all private donations? Is it all monthly pledges? Is it all a corporate sponsor? What is that? And look at putting it on paper so that you can define it. Then you can figure out, is there an area that's lacking that we really need to work on? Or is there an area that's growing and solid that we should nurture? Number six, look at the opportunities around you. Look at your community, look at your connections, your network, your board members network in the community, and see what opportunities you have that you could be tapping into. This might also be events, guest speakers, volunteers, people who would be willing to partner with you, potential complementary organizations that you could work together on something. So look at that and just brainstorm a list. And at this point, you're just brainstorming. So even if it's a wild idea, write it down, (laughs) get it on paper, because sometimes that teases out a bigger idea that actually turns out pretty good. Number seven, include donor stewardship and communication in your fundraising plan. Make sure that you are taking care of your current donors, meaning communicate well with them. Let them know how things are going and be honest with them. Let them know what the struggles are. Let them know the wins. Let them know if something fell through or isn't quite working right. Be proactive in that communication and use the combination of methods. Maybe that's pictures and messages, social media, email. Use that combination to reach out and keep your donors in the loop and show your appreciation to them often. Number eight, prioritize your strategies. This goes back to what I was saying with all those fundraising ideas, (laughs) you can't do them all. So really look at these steps that we've talked about so far and prioritize which strategies will work the best for you right now at this stage of your nonprofit's growth. Also, an important thing to consider is how much will each strategy actually cost you? Meaning, not all fundraising events are free to put on. So is something going to just barely break even? Are you going to lose money on it? Can you invest a small amount to get a potentially larger return? Look at the real cost of each and consider everything. Consider, you know, your time, effort, what all else is involved the time running around getting donations, your gas and mileage for that. Look at the bigger picture of that and really dig into that so that you have actual data to work with. Don't be afraid of that. You need to know. It's just facts. You need the facts to be able to assess accurately what's working and what needs to be adjusted. 
Number nine, once you've done all these things, then you can start building a timeline where you can look ahead at what's coming up over the next year to maybe two years, and you can spread out your activities. Like I said, if you know there's something coming up, say in the fall, then you can work backwards to when certain things need to happen. Maybe by July, you need to start crafting some social media posts and letters to start going out. August, you need to have flyers and volunteers ready. So step by step, you can back up and go through the year and start putting together that timeline. That also helps you spread out the work so that you're not piled with a bunch of work all at once and dumping that on your volunteers and burning them out. You can spread that out and see if you can do some things ahead of time as well. So then you aren't scrambling. It just helps avoid mistakes, avoid stress, and you can plan it out much better when you do that. And number 10, this one's important as well. You need to assign responsibilities and build in accountability as you implement. That way it doesn't just get marked down as, oh yeah, that's a great idea. And then nobody takes it on. You need to make sure that there are responsibilities assigned so those can be delegated, but you kind of need a point person to monitor those and keep track and make sure those things are happening well. And this is something that's kind of a team effort that if people are choosing this, it needs to be realistic and you're working together and agreeing that this is the best strategy. And then as you go, you can also evaluate, is this effective or not? And do we need to tweak something? What changes do we need to make in how we're doing this? All right, there you go. So a quick run through number one, budget. Number two, a clear vision, mission, and core values. Number three, goals. Number four, consider your community events and trends. Number five, evaluate your current funding base. Number six, look at the opportunities around you. Number seven, include donor stewardship and communication. Number eight, prioritize your strategies and consider the cost. Number nine, build a timeline. Number 10, assign responsibilities with accountability. All right, if you need help thinking this through, either as the nonprofit or as a grant writer of how you could package this to help a nonprofit, go to teresahuff.com slash nonprofits, book a strategy call, and let's think this through. I don't want you stuck. I don't want you sitting there spinning your wheels and wishing you could be more effective, but not knowing how. Let's get you moving forward. You can do this, my friend. We need you out there doing this. So sometimes just a one hour call can help put a lot of pieces into place and you can save a ton of time and frustration and stress because then it just helps you figure out what you need to focus on and how you need to move forward right now. You don't have to do all the things. You just need to do the next right things and keep doing that. And that is how you change the world. All right, my friends, have a great week. If you love this show and you learn something new about being the type of grant writer the world needs so you can create a ripple in your community, please go leave me a review over on Apple Podcasts today. Thanks for listening. Now go change your world.